had many great experiences in the sport of horse racing and in fact I've been going to race courses since 1974 where the Bull Brand International at Scottsville was my first race meeting. Now the point I'm trying to illustrate today is where do they come from? Here's a horse called My Intention. He's a big 17 hand strapping son of Spectrum bred at the Highlands Farms and of course Spectrum was the sire of Golan who himself was a great multiple grade one winning champion. But this fella was a chronic bleeder. I'm not going to go into that, but he was a very, very poor racehorse, but he's a lovely horse to work with in the yard. So that's my, my intention. He's 17 hands. The second fella is a horse called Alimony. Now, Alimony was bred at the Greyston stud of St. John Grey. He's a son of Alami, who's a son of Danzig. He's a small little fella. He's only about 15 hands, but he won 10 races, including having won the Emerald Cup, having run second and having run third. So that's Alimony. Then we've got Henge. She's a daughter of Northern Guest, who was the champion brood messiah. Although she only won one race, she was very, very fast. She had an injury which curtailed her racing performance, but she's probably the best horse that I've ever had in my life or ever will have. So that's Henge. And then we come to Classic Summer. Now this is the worst racehorse I've ever seen in my life. He's the son of Rakeen. Her Rakeen, of course, is the sire of the great jet master who produced the greatest stallion statistics in the history of South African breeding. But this horse, Classic Summer, cost one million rand as a yearling, and he was absolutely useless. In about 11 starts, he never earned one rand, not even one rand. But he's got huge potential as a show jumper. He's got a beautiful personality. And Classic Summer, hopefully, will do my wife proud in time to come. So the point I'm trying to make is that if you buy a horse from a sale, you only see him walk around in the ring. You only look at his pedigree. You only look at his confirmation. You don't know how he can run. Conversely, at a ready-to-run sale, you can go and have a look at the way the horse moves on the track, the way he's been prepared, and at least you have some sort of guide as to how he'll perform in his career. So that's the story about the great champions. We're going to start off with the greatest champion of them all. His name is Frankel. He's trained by Sir Henry Cecil. He'll be ridden by Tom Queeley and he runs his very last race of his illustrious and star-studded career at Ascot this particular weekend in the Quipco Queen Elizabeth Cup. So that's Frankel. Let's go to the starting stalls and pick up the action and thereafter we'll tell you the story of where they come from. It's the Queen Elizabeth II stakes and here's Jim. The great Frankel attempting to consolidate his reputation as the world's best. That's it, they're racing. So Bullet Train comes back to them at the two, being tackled now by the stable mate Frankel who takes it up clearly. Acceleration behind them, followed by Immortal Verse produced on the far side. A furlong left to go. It's Frankel by two lengths. Trying hard acceleration. He's gone for the whip clearly, but kept going. Frankel goes on to make it nine out of nine. Exciting, scintillating and sensational. You'll never see another like him. Frankel goes on to beat acceleration. Further back a more. Have you ever wondered where these horses come from? These magnificent flying machines that take several thousand people for a ride at the same time. I was recently reading a Summerhill press release with regard to those magnificent men and their flying machines, which of course refers to the judges on the panel of the ready to run sale. A horse can have a pedigree, a horse can have a reputation, a horse can have the most magnificent looks, but if it doesn't run, if it hasn't got the engine and it hasn't got the heart, you haven't got a chance. So tonight on the Winner's Circle, we take you back through the pages of history to take a look at some of the great horses that have graced the turf in South Africa and further afield. Starting off with a horse called Horse Chestnut. Now Horse Chestnut was never sold at a sale. He arrived at the yard of champion trainer Michael de Kock after having been bred by Harry and Bridget Oppenheimer at their Moritz Fontaine stud. He subsequently became the best racehorse in South African turf history, at least for the past 50 years. And that's a consensus undertaken by many scores of seasoned journalists. He was not a hard horse to like. I mean, you didn't have to be a very good horseman or an expert or have an eagle eye to see that this looked like a serious racehorse. I believe that, that these horses find you, that you don't find them. 
Um, and I think, especially in my case, uh, there's no doubt that it, that it was destiny. But they're chasing shadows. It's Horst Chestnut. This is true greatness. He's killing them in the JMB Met. Horst Chestnut goes on to win it well. And ladies and gentlemen, I'll keep quiet. You bring him home. Bring home the champion. Horst Chestnut by five lengths. Fourth to five and second. The rest a long way back. What a moment for the Oppenheimers. For the 150 to go, ladies and gentlemen, you might never see this horse in this country again. He is a true champion. In fact, he is a true legend. As we salute Horse Chestnut, he annihilated them and won by 10. But here's the favorite, Dynasty, finishing hard on the outside. Yard Army's trying to stay with him, but it's Dynasty, and Dynasty's gonna win it. The most brilliant filly to race in recent times is a filly called Igugu. She is by the incredible Galileo, who happens to be the same sire as the greatest racehorse to grace the turf in the last hundred years, a horse called Frankel, who incidentally has his very last start in his glittering career at Ascot this coming weekend. Frankel has swept all before him. He has broken every record he has exceeded every expectation of every jockey, every trainer, and every racing scribe. He truly is one of the most marvelous horses that God ever created. Igugu, as we said, by the same sire Galileo, has swept all before her in South Africa. She won the Triple Crown. She won the Vodacom Durban July. She won the JNB Met, and is currently Dubai bound for what hopes to be a glittering campaign in the United Arab Emirates. The people's horse Pierre Jordan cost just 65,000 Rand. He was purchased at the ready to run sale and was bought by Gary Alexander. Everyone had an opportunity to look at Pierre Jordan and there was no doubt that many looked at him and passed him by. Simanji Manje, a son of Kohal, was second in this year's Vodacom Durban July, was also passed out by many people, but happened to catch the eye of trainer Tyron Zaki and he has become a very, very good value for money spinner. The interesting aspect of the acquisition of Igugu is that Michael de Kock was actually at the ready-to-run gallops when she was purchased. Andrew MacDonald, who subsequently became his patron, was the man that eventually put his hand up. She was, however, the pick of Joey Ramsden. Wish I'd been lucky enough to buy her. Anyway, we were under bidders and we got quite close, but uh, it's a smashing filly. And Michael de Kock picked a more expensive filly, which he found quite amusing. We bought the other Galileo be, be, that uh, went to the ring before Geek Gugu for two million rand, never won a race, but well bred, so we got a chance at state. But um, yeah, you know, it's, uh, I think it's a great concept really at the end of the day. And uh, the funny thing I've found as well is that the horses from the sale are actually quite sound. So I think it says a lot for the early training and pre-training and bone density uh, issues that, uh, uh, that we have uh, when you put in the work early. But at the end of the day, it's the luck of the draw and how the horse eventually ends up in your yard and you take her to the great heights that makes the acquisition all the sweeter. There are not too many exceptions to the rule that those who found their best prospects have been influenced by the way that the horses have galloped. This can be in the flesh or can also be seen on DVD or television broadcast. That's how Gary Alexander found Pierre Jordan. Ronnie Napier and Michael Fleischer discovered him Bongi. He went on to great things in Dubai and is currently retired to Ascot Stables in the care of Bill Johnson and Sandy Manasseh. Everybody knows about the Ready to Run Cup. It's the richest sponsored race of its sort in the world. And I'm standing here with one of the most beautiful horses ever to have participated in the Ready to Run Cup. This horse's name is Mbongi, and he is undoubtedly the best performed son of Russian revival, himself a son of Nuriev, ever in South Africa. But it's Mbongi who's got about two or three lengths ahead now with about 150 metres left to go. And it's Mbongi out here moving like a winner. Mbongi going to win by about four or five lengths. He's trying to give me a little bit of a nibble, but he's got the most beautiful temperament and he was brought back to South Africa courtesy of the kindness of Ronnie Napier and Michael Fleischer, who raced him in partnership with Sheikh Mohammed bin Khalifa Al Maktoum. Not only did he win the KRA Guineas and the Gauteng Guineas and was second in the Ready to Run Cup to Amgazi, but he was also the Victor Lodorum of the Dubai Racing Carnival. 
It's now time to take a look at the prospects for this year. You know, buying a horse at the ready-to-run sale, it's, it's, a, it's a great sale. You can actually see them gallop, you can see them work. Uh, you know, you go to other sales, uh, they might look good, but you don't know how they move, if they've got an action, if they haven't. So it's a good sale. Uh, Wally actually is very good watching those tapes. Watched it many times and plumbed for him and a couple of others. But uh, we were lucky enough to buy him. Uh, and as you say, he, he really won a very good race last time. Into the final 150 and Cookie Monster is at the front. Cookie Monster goes on by two lengths and second place is Road Warrior and is going to stay that way as Cookie Monster goes down to the line and wins it by three. How's this fella matured because he is quite a late fall? Yeah, he's a November foal, so he's, he's actually still two. Um, he's still growing. Uh, that's the reason that, you know, he, he's now one. We're not going to run him on these hard tracks right now. He's got good legs. He's never been chin sore. He's got a good bone structure. Uh, I think he's going to be, to train on to be a very decent horse. Well, I obviously bought him, but Kevin was also at the sale and Kevin liked him as well. Um, Kevin's re relatively new in racing uh, and he's very lucky. Uh, he started off very well, had a few good winners with, with Wally's actual, actual stallion damage is done. He's got tatters and shattered image and they've both done very well. And very lucky to be in a, involved in a horse like this. And Vanessa Harrison, uh, she's, also got a, she's also a third shareholder. She's also relatively new in this yard uh, and also seems pretty lucky. So let's, let's hope it's a good partnership. basically taken off in front here and using his enormous stride to go five or six lengths clear. His celebration is giving 